presenter for this morning's webinar. Thanks, Victoria. Thanks. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Let me know if anybody can't see that. <laughs> All right, so my name is Steve Hale. I'm uh, in the Office of Technical Services here at ODOT on the GIS team, and I do a lot of um, administration with the TIMS system. So I do day-to-day -day administration, some database development, and I'm here to talk today to talk about some of the upcoming application enhancements that are actually coming to the TIMS system. Um, so if you're not familiar with the TIMS systems, TIMS stands for Transformation Information Mapping System. And it's ODOT's um, online portal where we try to centralize a lot of our enterprise data um, for download analysis right there in the application. Um, so it's a very powerful tool. It's a kind of a one-stop shop that you can come to get a lot of different data from various offices throughout ODOT and some external agencies as well. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and jump into um, the TIMS application here. So this is our development application. And like I said, we are about to release, we're very close, we're about to release the new um, TIMS version. I think we're still a week or two away, finalizing our testing right now. Um, but very soon on the TIMS site, you should see uh, a notification, some news about what is coming and when to expect those changes. Um, when we do release a new application, it'll be the same URL that you're used to and that you know. Um, this is the current site here. So this URL won't change, but you will see the new enhancements sometime within the next couple weeks. So what are some of the new enhancements coming with the TIMS application? Um, the biggest enhancement I think that, that, that is coming is in the Create a Map page here. So some of you who have used the TIMS system before um, know that the Create a Map page is, is a little clunky. You have to scroll up and down quite a bit. Um, we are moving towards a full page map. And then we're docking some of the tools that you're used to on the left hand side of the screen. And then on the bottom, of the screen, you can actually interact with some of your results tables and your queries. So just for reference, I'm going to open up the, the current production application. And you can see it looks quite different. So currently in production, you have to play with your map up top here and then scroll down to enable some layers. And then if you do have a query built, going to select some data, you have to scroll all, all the way down to the bottom to interact with that data. So this is kind of, uh, this is one of the biggest um, complaints that we've had with the application in the past. And so what we're doing with this new enhancement is just a full page map screen here. And you can actually hide and dock um, any of the tools in the, the results table so you can interact with the full page map. And I think this is what most people are used to when they interact with maps these days. Um, and it really allows a, a more customized user experience so you can choose which tools and which, uh, which windows you really want to see. Looks like there might be a message. Oh, that's from Victoria. Yeah, if you guys have questions throughout this, uh, go ahead and type them in there. And I'll try to answer them as I can. If I can't answer any of your questions, I'll certainly um, write those down and try to get back to you. So I'm going to come back to create a map to show you some of the other uh, functionalities and features that are coming. Um, but one of the other major enhancements to TIMS um, coming in the next couple weeks is this crash data search page. So currently um, in TIMS, this is not available. Um, this is brand new to the application. And what this is, is some of you might be familiar with the GCAT system. Um, that stands for G GIS Crash Analysis Tool. So the safety group here at ODOT has this tool that you can get in and query crash data that comes from um, the Office of Public Safety and view that on a map. Um, and they're actually going through some application enhancements as well. And part of that is to integrate their GCAT system with TIMS. So now, if you are a GCAT user, which you do need a login, as you'll see in one second, you can come to this page here and you can just click login. Now, if you don't have access to this already and you think you, you should have access, you can um, request access through this page too. 
by clicking the new user and then that'll send a request to the proper people to give you access. Um, also, if you forgot your password or if you just need some public information, you can access all that through this portal as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and log in here and show you some of the functionalities coming with the GCAT system. So once you click log in, um, I'm on the ODOT system, but you will probably, if you're external, be prompted to enter some credentials. But once you enter those credentials, it's going to bring you to this crash data search page. Now this page allows you to um, build a custom query and filter so you don't have to look at all the crash uh, data, which is millions and millions of records, all in one map. So you can search on um, the year that occurred. So I'm just going to say 2016, but you can choose one or many years. You can choose a month if you're so inclined. So let's just do May. And then there's all sorts of crash details that you can use to really um, customize and, and build a, a very specific query of crashes that you want to see. I'm just going to leave this blank. Some of the emphasis areas are down here too. So you can choose what alcohol or drug related, is it speed related, maybe it's in a school zone. Some driver vehicle information. And then there's some locational information too. So maybe I want to say that this is at a certain intersection or maybe it's in a certain county or township. Um, you can also search by a, a route. So if I wanted to search crashes on just a specific section of route, I can come in here and add that. Let me just do Franklin County. Interstate 70. And then I'll do um, from milepost 1 to 3. So I can add that section of route to my filter. And then once I have this all complete, so this one is only doing 2016 on that section of road, I can click view and map. And what it's going to do is it's going to search through the entire database and show me all the results um, for my specific query. And then I can click view and map. And that's going to take me to the create a map page and show me those crashes here on the map. So once I'm in the map, I can do a little more analysis. Um, I can click on the records, I can get some more information, and there are some more custom tools um, to do maybe an intersection analysis or like a corridor analysis by building these graphics. So I can build a point or a line graphic and buffer that to capture all the crashes within a specific area that I'm interested in. So this is one of the major enhancements. If you're used to using GCAT already, um, this might be a change for you, but the safety people here at ODOT will be rolling this out and doing um, GCAT specific training classes to get people up to speed on, on how to use this application. So if you browse back from Create a Map there, all your queries are going to be saved. So if I came back into Tim's tomorrow or the next day, um, whatever query I had applied last is going to be preserved in the application. To clear that, you can just click clear here. But I'm going to browse back to um, the home page here. And one of the other application enhancements coming, um, there are, there's a slight change to the project search page. So if you're used to using the project search page, um, you know that this is our Ellis database, which tracks all the projects within the state of Ohio that have committed federal funding. So currently in the, in the application, you only have one option up here for your district and county. And what this is searching on is um, how that is stored in our project tracking system, in our Ellis system. Now, you might have a project that spans county boundaries but in order to record this in the system, you have to apply a single county and district to that project. So in order to, to kind of work around this is we have a new functionality here that allows you to search by the location of record or the work location for that project. So if I could search by work location here, 
it'll do the same uh, type of filter as if I searched by recorded location. And let me try to illustrate what this means. So I'm going to search by location of record on District 2 here. And you can see that this one PID actually spans two different work locations. So two different counties that are actually in different districts are all, um, this one project has work locations in both of those counties. So this work location, if I were to filter by District 1, I would now see that work location captured under my District 1 here. So it's a little confusing, but um, it is, it is a, a solution to a problem that a lot of our users noticed when they were trying to filter based off of district and county. Um, one other enhancement to the project search page is once you come into view details, if it is a pavement related uh, project, we do have some new uh, fields here to support pavement treatment category and pavement treatment type. So now you can come in and you can see the project. You can not only see the work location, but what treatment, what pavement treatment was applied to that section of road. And all the same functionality and, and the, the project information page is, is, is there. You can view it in the map. Or if I browse back, we have a new button up here um, called View in Ellis. So again, Ellis is our project database. And this isn't taking you to the, the main project database, but this is rather a uh, publicly facing portal that shows you all the project information related to that pit. So you can come in here and you can view some of the details about the estimates for that project. Whoops. And you can print all these. And there's just a lot more information here available um, in this Ellis Praj page, page than, than you can find in TIMS. All right, so I'm going to now go into Create a Map. So we kind of already, already saw the differences here in Create a Map. Um, one main difference is if you're used to using the TIM system already, you might notice that this base map looks a little different. So in the current TIMS, it defaults to this streets base map, which is fine. It's very pretty. It looks nice. However, this is not ODOT's data. Um, there's a lot of confusion when you look at some of these roads, and they might not necessarily align with the road network that ODOT maintains. So to get around this, we have created our own custom base map that you can enable up here under your base maps by clicking on ODOT base map. So it's not quite as pretty as some of the um, professional maps that are made. But what we lack in beauty, we gain in data. So we are looking at ODOT's official road inventory here. And so you can be assured that all the roads that you see here are actually aligned with the roadway that ODOT maintains in our GIS system here. So once the application is live and you play around with this, if you see some issues, errors with some of these base map um, symbolizations, labels, maybe it's missing data that you would like to see, let us know. Go ahead and send us um, a note using this contact down here on the bottom uh, right hand side of the home page. Send us an email and let us know if there is something that you would like to see and we would be happy to uh, try to accommodate that. So in Create a Map, um, when you come back to Create a Map, one of the new enhancements is it's going to remember what base map you used the last time you were in, in the application and it's going to default to that base map. So say you like using this dark gray base map, and then you browse away. When you come back to create a map, it's going to remember what base map you had on last and default to that every time. So it could be a good, could be a bad experience, um, depending on, on what type of base map you use last. But just keep that in mind when you are using the application. So. I mentioned that we rearranged the, the, the map layout, how the tool interface works 
um, all the same functionality that you're used to in the current TIMS application is available in this new um, interface. It's just packaged a little differently. So it still defaults to your layers here, and you can um, toggle your layer groupings, turn on certain layers. zoom into those areas the same way using your map interface. And then we have a couple tabs over here under the layers tool that you can toggle. Oh, looks like I'm freezing up a little bit. There we go. Bear with me for one second. I think uh, might be freezing. There it goes. Okay, so once I turn on a few layers here, and I zoom in and I can see the layers on the map, I can come over here to my legend. I'm going to turn on a couple others. So let me turn on some traffic data. I know a lot of people like traffic data. I can click on my legend here and see all the information that I'm seeing in the map. So now instead of having to scroll down from the map just to see the legend or just to toggle the layers, you have all that ability here in your left hand pane um, to interact with those layers in your legend while you're viewing the data in the map. Another um, very hotly requested item was this identify tool. So currently in the app you have to choose which layer you're selecting from, you have to click on the map. If you chose the wrong layer you might accidentally select something that you didn't intend to. Um, the, the enhancement to this tool allows you to just enable the tool, click on the map, and it's going to extract all the records from regardless of the data set, from all the data sets in your map, all the layers turned on, and show you all that organized here on the left hand side in a nice neat identify box. So. I've clicked on this section here, but it looks like I've also clicked on a bridge. So I can toggle between my traffic AADT layer and my bridge inventory to see all the information about either one of those assets. Now if I say I select two segments of road here, I can toggle between the two and you can see it highlight on the map over here real time of which feature I actually have selected. And so I can see all the information about that and this is a this has an active hyperlink in it so I can actually click on the hyperlink here directly in my identify window and go to uh, whatever that um, respective hyperlink is. So it, it's, it, it fixes the workflow a little bit. You still have to be familiar with the tool and understand that you can select multiple pieces of data at one time. Um, but it is an enhancement that a lot of people have requested and I think it's uh, our vendors did a good job of implementing that. Another tool that was uh, requested, I think a lot of the bridge people, um, the people that maintain our bridges here use um, degrees, minutes, seconds versus decimal degrees in our lat longs. So when you use the find latitude longitude tool here, we ha have a um, added support for degrees, minutes, seconds. So you can click find there and it'll find that location. Let me turn off some of these layers here. And you can also click on the map here, extract the lat long value, and then you can toggle between decimal degrees and degrees minutes seconds. So all the other tools, like I said, are available here. They just look and are packaged a little bit differently. Um, you can still filter by attributes. Um, using uh, all these filter tools here, but it's just packaged and, and organized a little bit differently. But the functionality is all the same uh, that you're used to in the current TIMS application. Another enhancement to uh, that 
which actually is not working in this test version, but I'm going to show you this other one, is in your data glossary page here, we have all our data definitions. Under links and metadata, you can actually click on this um, question mark and see when the last time the data was updated. So you can see the last uh, date refreshed and you can see the update cycle for those data sets. Um, a lot of our data sets are done uh, just on an annual basis or as needed, but we do have some data sets that we get questions on like PCR or traffic counts. How often is that data updated? Well, you can just come here and see what that update cycle is. So that's pretty much it for the, uh, the application enhancements. Um, Again, you can expect to see this in production probably um, within the next week or two. We're finalizing our, our database and our testing right now, and we are going to start pushing it out to a production environment, um, hopefully next week, if not the week before. So do I have any questions over here in the, uh, the chat box? Doesn't look like it yet. No, I don't see any, but I'll go ahead and unmute everybody. Um, okay. So just watch your background noise, please. And if you want to ask questions of Stephen, you're more than welcome to. So. We hear somebody talking out there. That's why they make the money. Yeah, every golf is zero, zero time. Maybe unmuting everybody wasn't such a good idea. So there. Um, once we go into production, we're going to have a couple more trainings in the next two months. In June, we'll have a hands-on in-person training where we walk through the entire application step-by-step. Step. We go through specific workflows. Um, that'll be done in June. I don't know what the exact date is, but it'll be here at Central Office in Columbus. Um, and you can get more information about that through the LTAP office. They um, offer this training for free. Um, and then we have another webinar when we'll be live in production, and that'll be more in-depth, hands-on as well. Um, but that'll be uh, that'll be done in July. There are some questions coming in through the chat pod, and you know, if okay. I think I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody back real quick, and then I'll just unmute you, Stephen, real quick. If you do want to talk um, directly to Stephen, you'll be able to do that by unmuting yourself. Um, there, Stephen, you're unmuted. So there's a question okay. from Josh Conrad. Is yeah, there a way to download that. the ODOT street space map you're using? There, it, well, there's not really a way to download it right now. So all of this data that feeds the map is available um, through our data download page. But if you would like to consume this space map, let me see if I can remember this URL. Um, O H. So if you're familiar with REST services, um, this is still a, a kind of a dev environment. But when we go to production, this will be live and available um, to the public. But you'll be able to consume our REST service directly through this REST URL. Um, you can add this through a service in ArcMap. You can also use it in ArcGIS, ArcGIS Online. Um, but this is essentially what that underlying base map is. Uh, this is what is feeding that base map there. And Josh, if you would like more information about using that, feel free to contact me. Um, but we will make that publicly available for users to consume. You've got some other questions. Um, there was a comment about Mark said he really likes the new create a map layout. And then oh, Jamie thanks, wanted to know, um, is PathWeb going to be added? Okay, so that's a good question. So PathWeb is still in, um, in the application. However, there is a, uh, I guess it's not a bug, but a limitation to the PathWeb tool currently that I will show you. I'm using Google Chrome. If I try to open it in Google Chrome, it'll say that it's 
um, using Silverlight and it's no longer supported by Google Chrome. But if you are a Chrome user, you can just copy that URL and paste it into Internet Explorer um, and that'll, that'll work for you. Um, I know that the people who maintain PathWeb are working on um, fixing this, are working on moving away from Silverlight. But yes, we will, uh, to answer your question, we, we do have the PathWeb functionality still available. Okay, and then there was another question. When is the new format going to go live? So I don't have an exact date on when this is going to go live. Um, we are actually today, so as soon as I get off this call, I'm going to finish my testing. And we have some testers here at ODOT who are, who are finalizing our, our um, full, um, full testing of the new application. And we're hoping to go live, if not next week, the following week. But I, fingers crossed, we, it'll be before June 1. Okay. All right, and then a couple more questions. Is this information available to the public? And how is the traffic count information updated? Okay, so I'll answer the first one. Um, first, yes, everything that you see in TIMS, with the exception of this new crash data search is fully available to the public. Um, this is a public application. This is all public data. If you hate the TIMS interface, um, you don't want to use our tools, you can come to the data download page up here and you can download any one of those data sets for your own personal use and consumption. Um, you can download to Excel, KMZ, a shapefile or a geodatabase if you're a GIS user. But yes, this is all available to the public and actually if you're a savvy GIS user and you know how to use and consume REST services, we're happy to provide you all the REST services that we use to serve this application. And then the next question is, how is traffic count information updated? So that is a good question that I don't fully have the answer to. Um, TIMS is kind of a portal where we just go and grab the information from the database and serve it out into this, um, this application. Um, who asked that question? Let me see. Eric? Eric, if you want to shoot me an email, um, I can get you in contact with the people that actually maintain the traffic data, and they can give you a more precise answer on um, how they input the data and how often that data is updated. So let me go ahead and type my email into the chat box. While Steven's doing that, if you have any additional questions that you'd like to ask, you can either unmute yourself by clicking on the microphone or phone image in front of your name um, in the attendee list, or you can um, just type your questions into the chat pod. We would like to go ahead and answer any additional questions um, now that Steven has finished with the presentation. Feel free if anybody has other questions that you think of later. To just copy down my email address and let me know um, what those questions are and I'm happy to answer everything I can or point you in the right direction. And there was a, a question actually for myself from Mark. Um, I am attempting to record this training session so if it is successful I will be posting a link on the LTAP website and then I will also be sending it out to everyone who registered for the webinar as well. So Stephen, it looks like you had another question come in about ADT. Okay, so Anuj, um, that kind of goes along the line that Eric had. We are pulling the latest traffic data. So if you are, if you are a user of the MS2 system, which um, is our traffic I guess monitoring system here, not monitoring, but um, it's where all our traffic counts are stored. Um, it's kind of a portal, similar to Tim's, how you can access all this traffic data. We're pulling the, all that data um, on a bi-weekly, I want to say, basis. So every other week we're pulling the latest and greatest traffic information from that um, application. So. I don't know how often that application is updated. If you want to shoot me an email, I can certainly forward you along to the, the proper people who maintain that software and that application. 
And there's an additional question. Can the growth rates be used for planning purposes? Are they updated frequently? So the growth rates I know are updated um, on an annual basis. So the growth rates, I, I believe once a year when we update our road inventory data, um, we send that information along to the people who manage the growth rates and they use a combination of the road inventory data and the traffic counts to produce these growth rate projections. Um, so I don't know exactly, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to um, pretend that I know. I, I don't know the, the, the level of accuracy of those growth rates, but I can certainly, again, if you send me an email, I can forward you along to the, the proper people. Great, thank you. And I did put a link to the registration for our upcoming instructor-led trainings in the chat pod. I'm putting it in there again. Um, so there's a comment that says, I'd like to suggest contacting your district office prior to using growth rates. It was just a comment that came in through the chat pod. So any additional okay. questions from our participants today? There's one. You had mentioned the data is available to ArcGIS online. Is there certain tabs on the site that get to that information? Um, that's a good question. I think we used to have that in our news section, but I don't believe that's out there anymore. So. What I can do for you, who asked that question? Eric. Eric, go ahead and get in contact with me, and anybody else for that matter, and I can pass along the, the proper URLs for you to use. Um, now we are kind of migrating. We're going from one server to um, an upgraded version, so the URL that I do provide you might change in the next few weeks. However, um, we can keep in contact and, and get you the, the proper information as needed. But uh, go ahead and contact me, Eric, and then we can actually, that's a good idea to, to put that information out there on the site, maybe in the news tab um, for everybody to access. Great. And with the link that I put on for your training, as a reminder, that is just a half a day session, um, a few hours hands-on right at the computer using the, the software. So it's a great training, and I would rec highly recommend it to anyone who's interested in learning how to more robustly utilize the, the TIM system. So, Yeah, and this training that Victoria is talking about, it'll be, um, it'll be very hands-on. We'll show you uh, tool by tool what to use, but we also like to open it up for specific workflows. So if you have a, a very specific workflow, I need to find a route, I need to get the traffic count, I need to get the PCR data, I need to see what bridges, whatever that might be, we can tailor that towards your specific flows. So when you leave that meeting, you have all the tools in your hand to, to really get your work done and, and um, customize your workflows there with TIMS. Well, it doesn't look like we have any more questions coming into the chat pod. So thank you again for offering this webinar this morning. We greatly appreciate it. We'll be having another one in two months. Um, we'll make sure to send out the information on how to register for that. Um, I'll also be e emailing out a link to the recording if it worked this morning. So thanks, Stephen. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, Victoria. Have a good day, everybody. You too. Bye-bye.